Hello, I'm Sally. I'm currently a second year PhD student at the University of Sheffield and I'm going to be talking to you today about my research, Future Ferns, using paleoecology to inform restoration and conservation of the Lincolnshire Fenlands. I'll briefly introduce the landscape, go through my research questions and the methods and techniques that I'm currently using, and then I'll introduce some preliminary results and compare those to some pre previous paleoenvironmental work that I've done in the area. So the Fenlands are an area of low-lying land on the east coast of England. It's characterised by having a very low elevation. A lot of the land is either at or just above or below sea level. And as a consequence, the area has been extremely susceptible to fluctuating periods of both uh, fresh and water and marine inundation over the past 10,000 years, which is illustrated here on this diagram in the left. Um, the hydrological conditions of the area have um, meant that there's been a, a significant accumulation of sediments over the past 10,000 years. Um, we see mainly peat sediments on the fringes of the of the Fenland Basin and then um, uh, sed more sediments like silts and the clays around the Wash coastline. The area would have been um, underwater for much of the past 10,000 years to a certain extent and it's believed that society is mainly focused on living on the fringes of the marsh and on um, islands in the Fenland um, so that they could have access to the many resources that would have been offered by the resource rich landscape. Um, so I've just included this to kind of illustrate what sort of materials would have been offered to the proximate human inhabitants of the Fenland. However, over the past 300 years or so, the area has been extensively drained and what was um, often a very wet and, and boggy landscape with lots of um, variation is now um, largely used for arable agriculture and a lot of the peat soils have desiccated and wasted away and as a consequence much of the Fenland is now below current sea level. The Fenland area is extremely um, vulnerable to predicted accelerated sea level rise in the future as a result of climate change. And this research will aim to use knowledge of the past environment to help mitigate the future impacts of climate change and to uncover data from the peat soils while some still remain. Um, so the re main research question is how has the Lincolnshire Fenland environment developed and changed in response to climate, sea level and anthropogenic influences throughout the Holocene? The main methods will be to take stratigraphic surveys, um, identify a location for to take a borehole core and then undertake pollen microcharcoal and foraminifera analyses on that borehole um, so that we can reproduce a record of vegetation sea level and freshwater levels and anthropogenic influences on the study sites. Um, I'll also look at the archaeological and historical records and try to associate those with some of the anthropogenic changes that I've identified in the paleoenvironmental record and produce a model of uh, hydrological and vegetation changes, which I can um, present to the Lincolnshire Wildlife Trust to help them make future conservation management decisions for their areas of Fenland that they look after. So the main methods of research will be desk-based researchers looking for existing um, pay environmental, archaeological, historical records. I've uh, already started some field work. I've done some stratigraphic surveys and vegetation surveys, taken a borehole coal for analysis and um, started doing pollen work. Uh, next, I'll be doing some looking at some foraminifera and doing particle size and organic content analysis of the soils. And then I'll be doing some radiocarbon dating. And this will be followed by data display and statistical analyses and using GIS to uh, model some of the changes in land use. So I'm going to present some preliminary results now. This is a stratigraphic survey from Surfleet Lows. Um, we were able to get down to about six and a half metres at Surfleet Lows. Um, it's a, an area that is believed to have been salt marsh up until the medieval period and the stratigraphic survey does so show some variation um, but mostly looks to be dominated by sediments that may have been deposited in the salt marsh environment. 
I've also worked on a site called Frisney Decoy Wood, which is on the site of an old duck decoy pond. We also got quite far down on the stratigraphic survey here, down to five metres, um, and we got down to the post-glacial clays here. There was um, some differences to the stratigraphic survey that we did at um, Surfleet Lows. There is definitely sediments here that look to have been deposited in a salt marsh type environment as well, but there's also um, peat horizons, which indicate there was times where the marine waters regressed and um, a raised peat bog environment was able to de develop. Um, so I've already done some pollen work on the Frisney decoy wood core and I uh, just present the preliminary results here. Um, you can see that the, the core starts off at the bottom here. Um, it looks to be dominated by um, herbs that may have been on a salt marsh environment. Uh, there's very high microcharcoal levels, which indicates that there might be um, some um, deliberate human burning of the woodland in the in the area for clearance. Um, the the presence of pine and oak indicates that there would have been some um, some woodland present, probably on the margins margins of the fenland. Um, this horizon is highlighted here to to illustrate there must have been um, a big environmental change here. The, the organic content of the soils increases substantially, indicating that there was um, perhaps some peat bog development here. Um, the presence of uh, high birch and hazel levels that indicates that there might have been um, some development of alder car here too. Uh, there's another substantially different horizon here, um, indicating the development of um, of um, a cleared area. There is some heightened levels of microcharcoal on the horizon before, um, so the the differences in vegetation levels here might be a result of um, the area being cleared and um, more herbs being able to to um, spring up. And then at the very top horizon here, a few horizons, we see a substantial change in the local environmental conditions. There's a, a big increase in the organic content of the sediments and there is um, there are high levels of of birch and alder. So there's some alder car present in the area and the high levels of heather indicate that this um, study site had become a raised peat bog later on in the in the stratigraphic record. Um, in the lower horizons there was also formanifera present on the pollen slides. The next um, phase of the of the research will be to, to do um, formanifera analyses um, but we've already got some present on the pollen slides here indicating that they um, the sediments may have been deposited in a salt marsh environment. Comparison of the pollen diagram with this one, which is taken from um, a site much further inland that I investigated as part of my master's uh, project, um, shows that there's um, quite a few differences in the environmental conditions of the two sites. Um, so this record commences with the influence of sea level quite apparent, the blue horizon here. The green horizon shows um, a substantial increase in sea levels and um, salt marsh development. There's then marine regression and sedge fen develops. The orange horizon here um, shows that there's an increased influence of, um, of freshwater ponding on the site. And then at the top, we see the influence of um, the drainage and a reduction in freshwater ponding. So we still have a couple more years left on the project, but the next stage will be to do higher resolution pollen analysis at Frisney Decoy Wood um, and then move on to forum analysis and particle size analyses. Um, and then I will also be taking further boreholes from up to five more sites um, and doing the same analyses there. Um, and then I'll move on to statistical analysis and GIS mapping and will hopefully um, submit some of this work for publication as the PhD goes on. So to summarise, this research project will use paleoecological research methods to aid conservation and inform the land management potential of Fenland areas 
I've already done some stratigraphic surveys which indicate that there are varied de depositional environments in the Fenland and provisional pollen analyses at Frisney decoy would um, indicates a general change from salt marsh to aldercar followed by raised peat bog but there are horizons where we see um, fluctuating environmental changes. Um, similar patterns of environmental change can be identified in pollen records from across the region but um, it looks like the, the pollen record for, from Frisney decoy wood is, um, shows remarkably different environmental changes to those further inland at Willow Tree Fen. I'd like to acknowledge the help of my supervisors, Dr. Catherine Selby, Dr. Bob Johnston, and Dave Womrich from the Lincolnshire Wildlife Trust. And thank you for listening to my presentation.